Welcome, everyone, to Overtime. My name is Fari. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm here with Pastor Brad. Pastor Fari. Pastor Brad. So good. So, you ready for Christmas? Have you done your uh, Christmas shopping? Um, yeah. Uh, well, my wife is, Yo, uh, yeah. is instrumental. We're the same right now. I, I, I have some input. Actually, we did it all on, like, the Black Friday sales. We got it all done then. It's just couldn't, couldn't pass up those deals. I know. Uh, we have been blessed with good wives. Those, uh, they're gifts. They're Absolutely. gifts from the Lord to us, and they'll take care of business. I like it. Yes, but inputs. We do give inputs. We, we do that much. <laughs> um, talking about being wrapped in ourselves. Um, King Herod was wrapped in himself. Um, but I was thinking about this. A lot of times, obviously, as we talk about um, characters in the Bible that we can learn from, Ultimately, they also point to ourselves, right? It's like I see things in other people that are going the wrong direction. I'm like, ah, I've been there. I've done that. I've been wrapped up in myself, and I've missed where maybe God has been uh, at work, this idea of me and mine. You know, um, this, this points really to our selfish condition, and we all struggle with this, you know? We all struggle with this. It's not just that person or those people. We all have to come to that point of saying, you know what, Jesus, help me. Uh, why am I so wrapped up in myself? Help me to, to look out and look at others, look at how I can be of assistance and help and a blessing to others. And so have you, how do you do this? How do you fight this being wrapped up in yourself? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... You know, this reminds me, when I was in uh, Bible school, there was a professor that uh, said this, this phrase. It really stuck out to me, is that unless a church reaches out, is outwardly focused, it will devour itself from within. And the tru is, that truth is as evident in the church world, but also personally, if you are so inwardly focused, it's a toxic, uh, it's a toxic environment for your mental state. And if you're outwardly focused and you're thinking about others, it's better to give than to receive. We know this to be true. We know it's better to give than to hoard. And the greatest antidote for that mindset is generosity. For If you're a miser, generosity will break the power of that. And if you're, you know, consumed with possessions and needs, you need to give. You need to look beyond yourself because you will devour yourself from within. And as you mentioned, in the Bible, you see all these great examples of people, real people. And, and we can relate to them because they're real, fallible people that God used in incredible ways. And it brings yeah. me hope that God can use us as infallible people for his so glory. Good. Absolutely. And, and it reminds me that like when um, we're told that we are to bear fruit, we are to be fruitful. And when you think about the fruit tree, the, the, the fruit tree doesn't bear fruit for itself. It's not like, I'm going to eat this. <laughs> the fruit bears, uh, the tree bears fruit so others can enjoy it. And so in the same way, for us, if we are following Christ, really the fruit of our lives, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, fruit, fruit of the Spirit, it is for others to enjoy. Yeah. And so another one is, again, as we're talking in overtime about how can we practically do the message, this idea of being wrapped up in busyness. We see the innkeeper. We see others who are wrapped up in busyness. And that reminded me of this idea, again, being still and knowing that he is God. Yeah, so during so this Christmas season, how can we do this? I know there's lots to be done. And again, we're not talking about that you shouldn't strive to accomplish many good things f for God or for your community. But there's a difference between uh, doing God's will and then just being wrapped up in business. How do you differentiate that or how do you do that in your own life? Yeah, I think it takes uh, intention, it takes discipline. You have to realize that you're not God. And if you think that you what? are, I know it's crazy, but if you think you are the sole, uh, uh, you're solely responsible for every aspect of your life, that you are in complete control, that's actually a, a form of idolatry. That's, yep. that's a, a way of not trusting God. You do everything that you can do in your ability, in your strength, in your wisdom, and then you have to trust God with the rest. And I think no amount of striving, no amount of doing, no amount of, oh, I got to get everything in order, accomplish every goal, tick every box. I can't do everything. 
And when I think I do, I'm placing myself above God, and that's a dangerous spot to be in. And so we need to humble ourselves, submit ourselves to God, and say, God, I, I trust you with the things that I don't have control of. I trust you with the busyness of this season. And we wear busyness as a badge of honor, right? How are you? Oh, I'm so busy because I'm so important. I'm an important person. I got things to do. I'm a busy guy. Uh, I read an article um, in 1967. The U.S. government had the, uh, this study, and they, they were looking forward into the future, and they proposed by the year 2000 that the average work week would be 30 hours, even as low as 16 hours with technological advancements. They're looking to the future in the 60s and thought, they totally missed this it. technology is going to help us work less. <laughs> We're working more. We're working more. That's right. And we need to shut all the files down, take time, be still, open up God's word, allow him to speak to us, and allow him to shape our days. And I, you were yeah. talking about last night how you do that practically in the yeah, morning. Yeah, that's right. I, I think about this so when I wake up in the morning. I try to, again, um, right when I open up my eyes and I'm, and I'm conscious, I'm like, good morning, Lord. So this idea, like, reminding myself that God is with me. And again, as we're talking about even Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us, right? This idea that in the morning when you do this, I promise if, you, if you're not doing this, do it. This will actually remind you that you're not alone, that the anxieties, the worries, the, the, the tasks of the day, you're not going to do them alone, but that the Lord is right there with you. And so, and he knows everything that you need to accomplish for that day. And I think first things first, we put the big rocks in, if you guys remember that, that illustration, big rocks in first. So God first always. So before I get to my phone, before I get to emails, social media, text messages, whatever else, because that's usually what we reach for, right? Like, okay, what do I have here? But the first thing we should reach for is God. And so that way, I think that helps us from, again, being wrapped up in busyness where busyness starts to control us and where we get our identity or our uh, so-called worth from how much we do. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. And identity is a huge issue. Some people, you know, perfectionists and people who are so busy, they need to fill them their days and weeks up with more. It's, it, if I do more, if I accomplish more, if I do more neat things, if I get that to the next level, then I'll be worth something. Mm -hmm. Then my soul will have worth. But God breaks that whole idea. You, I, I love you even before you did anything for me. Even when we were sinners, Christ saw us. He, he came to this earth as we heard about the greatest gift. He died for us so that we could have life for all of eternity. He, he loved us even though we did nothing for him. And so no amount of striving or busyness or accomplishment will make God love me more or less, which is so amazing. What the greatest gift, as uh, Pastor David and Cheryl talked about. So I love that's it. That's amazing. Well, that's a great point to uh, end on today. Again, thank you for being here with us. We love you. We'll see you next weekend. See you soon.